this is a treat for us because when we have Safedin on, usually we have him on the phone line. And uh, since we've added the video component to our show, every now and then we bring guests on that have video as well. Zach Gelb always joins us and he's got video. Uh, Mike Cuno has attempted at times. Chris Whittingham, Josh Appel, they use video. Yeah. So Safed Dean and Safed, you are muted right now. I've just been told. Um, Safed Dean from USA Today is joining us with the video component this time. And I direct everyone, you're not, you can't watch it live, but we post the clips afterwards. Go to YouTube, search 560 WQAM, find the Hockman and Crowder playlist. But I uh, I ask all of you now, it's 3.30 now, so what, about 7 o'clock tonight, 7.30, Solana? Uh, for Safid, this baby's going up 6.05 6 today. 6.05, you Let's go to it. the uh, YouTube channel. Safid <laughs> is doing this segment in front of a passport photo background, <laughs> which is no background. This is like the Zoom or StreamYard people. You know, they have those faux backgrounds, and someone came up with this one, and they said, no, it's too boring. You get This is his actual wall. Where, where are you? Is this, where are you? You're in a Greyhound station? Uh, uh, this is my bunker. I'm, I'm in a tornado bunker. I saw the weather not doing good. I'm about to get in the corner and put my hands, you know, over my head and, and, and try to wait out the storm here. You know, I, I mean, got the- honestly, if someone was like, if they'd never listened to our show before, they don't read USA Today. And if we labeled this video, Hockman and Crowder speak with a doomsday prepper. Like people would click on it and wouldn't like they wouldn't question it for a second. He doesn't <laughs> look like he's in one of these doomsday prepping basements. Yeah. He's sitting on top of a box of ramen noodles. The- <laughs> <laughs> like eight years worth of ramen noodles. It's got to be a thousand pack of ramen noodles, right? <laughs> anyway, See, my, my whole goal, my my whole goal joining you guys was to make fun of your backgrounds. Like Hawk, you got a really nice home office there. Beautiful. Love the artwork. Love the photos. Salon is in the studio. 560 QAM Florida Panthers jersey in the, you know, getting framed up. Looks really nice. Crowder. Crowder's looking great in this office, man. Crowder has 36 books and 87 magazines. Can't read one word out of any of them. <laughs> I read some of those books. Yeah. Who's got Back? magazines in 2023? <laughs> Stop it brings up a great point. Who's still got <laughs> magazines? <laughs> Crowder, Crowder, hasn't cleaned up, Crowder hasn't cleaned those bookshelves since he played, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, too. The only, the only bobblehead I have is Chad Pennington, which is a very weird thing to have, but yeah, I got some stuff up there. Yeah, you see, that, here's, here's the problem. Here's the problem. When you have space like this that Crowder has, now he needs to find stuff to put on all the shows. So you hoard stuff. You don't want to have a Chad Pennington bobblehead after, you know, the past, maybe like 15 years ago, you know, it was all right to have. Now it's just, you know, collecting dust with all the other magazines. And I have it in a box because I wanted to keep its value. <laughs> What's the value? What's the value? Thirty-two fifty-six. <laughs> right. Look at this. I'm going Crowder to get a up. Chad Crowder Pennington bobblehead. Crowder got up. Oh, we used to sell. Like I, I used to work at. A, I used to work at a store. We would sell these. Yeah, that's like nineteen ninety-nine retail, man. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's a, that's a sharp bobble. Twenty seventy. This would be worth three thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? The, but you've done. I'm getting. Sapid <laughs> Dean writes for USA Today. By the way, for. Uh, for those who might be new to the show. And I was pointing out earlier that his bio now doesn't just say NFL, but it says Messi. So I, I'm guessing this, because um, we have noticed this. So we post videos. If it's a video like Crowder talking about Dolphins after a Dolphins game, we might get two or 3,000 views. Mm-hmm. If it's, and, and this is unfortunate, Miami Hurricanes, even in the, the Final Four basketball, couple hundred views. You know, it just depends. When we post a video about Lionel Messi, the most recent one was Chris Whittingham this week, 18,000 views. Last week, Whittingham was on with us, 26,000 views. The number of views, and obviously it comes internationally, not from our local audience, but they're just people want Lionel Messi info as much as they can get. Do you notice that? I'm guessing you, uh, you find out how many people click on articles and stories i'm i'm guessing there's a huge appetite for leo messi news well first of all we're gonna we're gonna name this segment messi mania tornado bunker 
and, and see how many views <laughs> we can get from it. Views we get. We're gonna get the the preppers, and we're gonna get the messy fans. This is a big. <laughs> we may have found ourselves a niche. <laughs> no, it's it's been really crazy, man. Um, USA Today has a really cool setup where we're kind of showing up on Google, like you know, top if not number one, top three, top five stories. Um, so I'm at the game doing live blogs. Like anything happens, I'm typing it in, in a couple story and putting an update and posting it online so that, you know, for all the people around the world who may not have Apple TV uh, and, and not able to watch the games wherever they are, um, if it's broadcast somewhere else across the world, um, they're going and looking up, you know, messy game or messy updates or messy goals. Um, <clears throat> and you're seeing, you know, just it, it's going through the roof, man, just like your views are. The things I've noticed, too, is like, well, we had a rain delay game, too, that really kicked, uh, you know, viewership up. But if it's a close game, if like they're either down or tied, people are a lot more interested in it. And that's on top of the fact that if Messi's going to score or not. And uh, we've been really lucky, man. The three of those games Messi started, he scored in the eighth minute, the seventh minute, and then the sixth minute. And so you're not really waiting long for action either. If you're somebody who's not really a big soccer fan and you're trying to get into this, um, you know, pay, trust me, pay, pay the Apple TV uh, subscription. It, it's worth watching. You don't have to wait long for action. And you get to see kind of the greatest player in the world in his sport um, still do what he does at, at a high level, even at, at 36 years old right now. And so if I could I could see and I we saw like the local media, obviously, you know, inner Miami going to start talking more with Messi here. But we're talking <clears throat> USA Today, like this big time. Is he changing American soccer? Has he changed American soccer already? Yeah, it's a it's a new day and age in the MLS and American soccer. Um, I would venture to say there's a lot of people who obviously are NFL fans, NBA fans, longtime baseball fans, um, and soccer maybe has not caught on with them or, or been on their radar even more. And when you hear somebody like Lionel Messi going to places like Philadelphia or Dallas or Nashville, and they're selling out tickets for this guy less than 10 minutes. The news people in those cities start to get attention of it. He's leading the news in those local areas to people, you know, may not go out and buy a ticket because it's too expensive now if they're not already in on what's going on. But it's getting a lot more attention. And I, I think this is a beautiful thing for the sport now. Um, and even more beautiful for us here, man. You know, we were we were on uh, last time I was here. We were spoiled, man. You know, we got messy. We didn't get Davin Cook, sorry. Uh, Dame Lillard still going to come probably in 100 days or so. We'll see when that happens. But we got really spoiled in, in the sports uh, world, especially in the last year with how the Heat did, how the Panthers did. And um, it's, it's really cool for us to kind of get to experience it. If you guys get a chance to go up to commercial and, and visit stadium, go ahead, man. This uh, this is what struck me yesterday, and you were covering. It was the first Lionel Messi press conference here in South Florida. What struck me is just how happy and excited he seems. It you know certain people they make a they make a career move and it's kind of well because they had to. This was the 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 next step. I I don't like even when David Beckham came to MLS. I think it was be he kind of had said, well, you know, I'm going to go play in a lesser league, but I'm probably a lesser player at this point. And it's a, this just seems, I almost feel like Leo Messi wishes he had done this sooner. That's the the feeling I'm getting. Did you get that vibe at the press conference yesterday? Um, I could pick it up after you said it for sure. I think uh, one of the things Messi said was he, you know, he spent 21 years of his life with uh, Barcelona. You know, he grew up in that program grew up with that franchise and led it to heights unknown. And um, uh, the guys are pointing at each other to see who's going to get the next question next for all the <laughs> listeners at home. It completely <laughs> threw me off. It. I'm sorry it about that. It completely threw yeah. me off, guys. I didn't floor. realize we use hand signals because sometimes the crowd is too loud. Well, I'm like, I'm like get, who's pointing get, at me? I'm already talking. <laughs> we can't get the play call in right without using our hand signals because the oh, crowd messes you guys, us up. You guys, this is Buffalo during the playoffs right here. Um <laughs> But yeah, it's it's crazy to see how he was in Barcelona for 21 years. Then he kind of got forced out and went to Paris to, to play at PSG. And, you know, they had Mbappe, they had Neymar there, and it just didn't work out well for Messi. Um, you know, he said that he felt like he was forced to go play in Paris, um, which is kind of crazy, to, and that he didn't want to leave Barcelona. Um, very candid comments from Messi, who was very 
soft spoken and just really happy, like you said. Um, nobody forced him to come here. That's that's kind of what he kind of said there. He felt forced to go to PSG, but he wasn't forced to come to Miami. And he's vacationed in Miami before a couple times. When you're people know about Miami already by now across the world. We're we're known as an international city more than an American city. Um, and so for the Latino population that's here as well too. You know, Messi feels right at home. You know, these people know how to approach him a certain way. Um, and, and God forbid he has to go to all the way to Saudi Arabia to make $100 million and try to talk to somebody that looks like me when you don't have the same language barrier, you know, going on there. Um, it's a much better option to come to Miami than to go somewhere else and, and, and play. Safid, I know now, you know, we're six games into this experiment. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm asking this question more along the lines of you covering the team, maybe in game two and game three. Were you as surprised as I was? I'd ask Witty this as well. You know, how much effort he is putting into the games against Dallas, they're down four to two, would have been very easy to just say, hey, it's been a good run. It is what it is. Maybe ask for a sub or, or kind of just trot a, a, around the field. But instead, he's chasing down 50-50 balls, going in hard. He's actively trying to set his teammates up uh, against Orlando. You know, he's going up against Araujo and he puts his entire body into him. That's not something you see from the quote-unquote aging superstar coming to a inferior league as it's being talked about. So to me, that kind of stood out as shocking because it's the greatest player of all time coming to this league and not just chalking it up and saying, yeah, I'm here to retire, but instead trying to play at that very same level that he's always played at. Yeah, when you have like... Messi is such a crazy case study for me because I've yesterday I was starstruck. I'll be honest with you guys. I was like, holy, you know, he's here. Maybe the other times I felt that was when like Tom Brady in Tampa, you know, my first year with USA Today. And maybe like the first time I met Coach K, you know, I, I gave him a pound right there at, at, a, at a AAU tournament. And I was like, wow, that's that's that person. Right. I don't get that a lot. And um, I, I think Messi, he's he's. His worldwide fame and celebrity has just come with the territory of being so good at what he does. He loves to play soccer. That's all he's about. As soon as he gets onto the field, nothing else matters. He just wants to play. He doesn't care about the money, doesn't care about the fame, doesn't care about any of that other stuff. He just wants to ball out. And so, like, you take that Dallas game, they're down 4-2, and everybody's kind of looking around, and, like, Messi knows he's the – he's, you know, he's stirring the drink. He knows he has to – you know, pick up the play for everybody else. And the coolest part about this is all the other inner Miami players have just followed his lead, followed along, played freely. Um, it's crazy to see how this team is six games in. They're going to play in a championship on Saturday night. Seven games in, they might win a title, right? Next month, uh, there's a there's another semifinal that they're going to play next week, I believe. The final for that is in the end of September. Within three months, they're going to have two titles. I mean, the way they're playing, Solana, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if they lose. I, I, I'll be really honest. Like, the way those guys are playing right now, they're a, a step above the competition, and their young guys are really, really good. Um, and when they come in, you know, with 30 minutes left in the game, just go crazy and run and try to get another goal and, and top the lead, um, they're going to be tough to beat, man. This is the best show. It might be in sports right now. Messi and Inter Miami might be the best show in sports right now until the Chiefs start playing. <laughs> and Sam, you talked about the press conference that you were at. I just need to know how do you live tweet a press conference that's in Spanish and you don't speak Spanish? How do you know I don't know Spanish, man? I could have been tell. doing this. I could have been doing this whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, tell. You don't have it. I saw. I saw your face when you said it. That, that just cracked me up too, man. You know, we <laughs> were live. We were live broadcasting your live tweets during the presser <laughs> yesterday. And I yeah. was making them up as I go. I said, okay, Safadine has just tweeted out, what am I doing here? This is in Spanish. <laughs> I was like, see, 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 very intrigued. Just like, just like Poppy Levitard, bro. <laughs> Did they have no, a translator uh, there? Yes. So when, when you walk in, they have a group of headsets there. And um, you grab a headset, you hook it up, you're on a frequency channel. As Messi's speaking in Spanish, the person speaking in English to you in your ear. So I was able to live tweet all the, all the uh, quotes. And then when people ask questions in, in English, um, Messi had a headphone and he picked it up and listened to it and then answered in Spanish. 